This is Monique Dupree, scream queen and wrestling personality for Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore as well as Impact Wrestling. And you are listening to Talkin' Trauma with Zach Bynes. Morning and welcome, not from Tromaville, but from the Colorado Festival of Horror. I'm Action Come News reporter Zach Bynes here talking to uh, different people at the convention. Uh, Uncle Lloydie is out here with the Denver premiere of Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. But right now, I uh, wanted to unleash my inner Nardwar and do some man on the street interviews and just uh, kind of gauge some people's reactions to their life experiences at trauma and maybe we'll have a few surprise guests along the way and i also want to say thanks to zach eastman of the yesteryear ballyhoo review podcast for running uh tech tech on this so if it sounds bad it uh is not me because i i don't know how to do tech stuff but uh on, on that note i think we should uh wander around and uh find some people to uh talk to and uh yeah this will be a a fun uh, a fun uh, special treat for all of you tromites and tromavillians out there all righty and we are here with brett smith brett please introduce yourself I'm Brett Smith, uh, one of the co-founders of Colorado Festival of Horror, and we were having a wonderful start to a second year. We're super excited to be here. I appreciate you putting on this convention. It has a very, uh, you know, just family f- family feel um, where everybody here feels like family, and it's awesome. And you brought out uh, Troma and Lloyd, and specifically you helped facilitate the Denver premiere of Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. Wh- and it got me wondering, what is your first experiences with uh, Troma movies? Well, with me, it was Toxic Avenger, of course, and I was going to, I was at a San Diego Comic-Con about 15 years ago and walking around on the floor and all of a sudden there's the trauma booth and there's a Toxie with the mop and with everything and the mask and he's going crazy and my wife was up there and she didn't know anything about Toxic Avenger and she comes over and like, oh, let's get a picture with you and it was like, and he was there and then I just came back from San Diego Comic-Con a couple months ago and he got to go to a panel and Lloyd and Pat were there and it was just fantastic and everything about them was great. Poultry Geist, I saw the, I'm, I'm flapping and flapping and flapping. <laughs> like Poultry Geist, we saw. It, it's a, flapping is very flapping. appropriate for Poultry, Poultry Geist. Geist. <laughs> it was a nice pun there. Yeah. So a Mutiny Information Cafe, we had an event, a Kofo Live and Undead that Dan Crozier did. And then there was the Oriental Theater. You guys talking about your whole experience about driving out to New York for the Troma Entertainment, helping with Poultry Geist, was the one that the film. And Lloyd loves Zach and Richard big time. And he did a nice interview at the Oriental Theater a few years back. And you can hear that interview on the Kofo uh, podcast. Yeah, Kofo Live and Undeads on YouTube and other places. And then it's and then we had like we've been planning Kofo Colorado Festival of Horror for three years before we got to do it. We had the pandemic happen that delayed us. I, I haven't heard about this. Yes. What what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what that was, but it was this weird dream <laughs> nightmare. So, but we were like, we need a lead-in event to the convention, and, we, and because of the pandemic and being the first year show, we really didn't have something last year, and we thought, well, how cool would it be to do a premiere of a film Thursday night before doing the three-day convention, and Lloyd Kaufman, I had seen that he had this new movie, and he was doing a premiere at, at I think, Alamo Draft House or somewhere in Texas, I can't remember exactly where, and I thought, damn, how fantastic would that be to have him come out? We wanted him to come to the show anyway, and we're working that, and we said, would you do a day early and come do Shakespeare shits? And he's like, you know what? It hasn't sh- even shown in Colorado yet. So all of a sudden, it turned into Colorado premiere. Dan Crozier, the other co-founder, worked with the C Film Center, and they were 
fantastic people, great sponsors. And they were like, let's bring the film in. I'll have a big event. Zach, you were fantastic coming in and saying, thank you. Let me Q and A and an intro. And it was a wonderful experience last night. And what a wild movie. (laughs) It was like, there was everything, trauma, everything. And it was really fun. Had great fun social commentary stuff. I loved every minute of it. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you uh, making me part of the of the event here and and bringing Troma out. Uh, where can people find out more about uh, next year's uh, Kofo? All right. So one thing I do want to say, without Zach and Richard and what you guys did to help yesterday, it was fantastic. I thank you so much. And he adores you. You know, Lloyd. You guys are super tight. And, thank you. And he, and we love Lloyd. Um, so next year tentative dates it looks like it's going to be september 15 16 17 so a little bit another week room away from labor day and we're planning year three was that what your question was <laughs> okay. well, and and where and where online can they find out more oh, oh it's at, it's at co which is colorado and then festival of horror spelled out so co festival of horror.com is our is our website and all our info is there awesome thank you so much brett thank you so much i really appreciate this Hey, I'm Dean Gates, a makeup effects artist from the 80s and 90s, and we're here at the Colorado Festival of Horror. Awesome. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, Dean. When I was going through looking to see who uh, showed up, I saw your name and instantly was like, oh my God, he did effects on Nightmare Weekend. Well, Nightmare Weekend was the first film that I keyed uh, uh, makeup effects on. I got uh, it was uh, the, the the it was filmed in Ocala, Florida. I was in Miami at the time, and the prop man knew they were looking for a makeup effects person, and it was a crazy show because we had a producer who was of Indian heritage from England, Bachu Sin. We had a New York producer, and uh, we had a crew from France and a crew from the United States, and uh, the French crew did not speak English and uh, we we went to Ocala and they did a scratch track on the film and all the dialogue even though they're speaking English was redubbed by other actors speaking English so it has a really strange Euro trash kind of vibe to it and the director Henri Salah was known for doing erotica in Europe and also he created I understand children's board games uh, there's a combination for it only in France right you know you're you're a semi a softcore porn director and a, a children's board game instructor anyway he came over we did it was his first horror film and um, uh, some of the craziest things ever happened to me on a movie were on that set and uh, you know and I thought man if the, if the, if the makeup effects uh, business is going to be like this it's going to be a wild ride can you tell me about some of those crazy things that happened to you on set? Well, one thing, not only the fact they're, you know, they redubbed the whole movie, um, we were at a remote location near the St. John River, and it was a beautiful looking Victorian house, and the people that owned the house were very unusual. The man uh, was dressed in like a safari hunter's outfit, and it talked like like Strother Martin, like, you know, what we have here is a failure to communicate, fellas. And we were shooting outside the house, and he would walk around, and he had a 1911 model 45 handgun strapped to his waist and at any given moment as we're filming he might yell out snake and he would pull out his gun and boom 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 shoot shoot a water moccasin like in, in it was up in the yard and walk out with this like you know like four inch diameter fat snake and we thought great as we're all diving to the ground as he's shooting at random if the snakes don't get us we might get shot in this movie that's awesome. That's so crazy. Can you can you tell me a little bit about some of the effects that you did in the film? Well, we had uh, the effect in the beginning when uh, 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 Dale Metcalf's character and his buddy are climbing uh, the silver ball, little, little teeny ball, like a miniature phantasm ball, flies up. Uh, attaches to his eye and pulls his eyeball out and then he falls and it blows off his face and you got this whole uh, skin face line uh, on the on the steps below we had uh, different uh, kind of like like possessions by this computer uh, I distorted several people's faces and um, we also I think we had the ghost specials going off behind us here uh, and uh, we did um, a couple of people uh, uh, head blowing up um, 
uh, uh, the actor Robert Burke, who would go on and be the second man to play RoboCop in RoboCop 3 behind Peter Weller, and he also was in Thinner, the guy that became Thinner and Thinner. Robert Burke, early early acting job for him, and uh, he gets the ball stuck in his neck, and his head flies off his head, and the head flies up in the air, and um, it gets, uh, uh, we shotgun blasted it uh, with a bunch of uh, innards inside and blew his head up. Uh, we had that, and I'm trying to think what else. Uh, there was a bunch of other crazy things. Uh, uh, the door comes down and smashes the one guy at the end and his eyeballs full of mayonnaise squeeze out his eyes I mean, it was it was it was and we had the, the several reshoots because uh, the director did not get a lot of close-ups I had to go back uh, to um, Long Island where the second producer lived and we filmed at his house and then uh, we uh, did another unit where I directed a, a third unit that we shot there in Miami uh, where I was living and got my friends together and they doubled some of the people and we shot more stuff there so it was kind of a, a real extended shoot and I think they even cut some things out at the end so uh, you know a lot, of, a lot of crazy mayhem going on and I did everything in my room in Ocala I set my lab up in my bedroom and uh, which is a mistake I took like the second double bed out and it had all the chemicals and fumes in there and I, thought, I realized later it's not good to sleep where you got uh, you know meth level ketone acetone and foam rubber being uh, run so uh, I learned a lesson on that one early in my career don't 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 sleep where you're making your 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 chemicals yeah no I I really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to me about nightmare weekend the trauma fanboy comes out you hear about stories from these deep cuts in their library is there anywhere on the social medias where they can follow and see what you're up to uh, well, you can always friend me on Facebook. I'm Dean Gates. Um, uh, got my picture there. Uh, I think it'll be pretty obvious when you go to my site. Uh, and that's really about it. I'm on Facebook right now. Uh, you can also go to my, my LinkedIn. I'm Dean Gates there. I'm, uh, I'm there known as a writer. That's what I do now is write. So I got my, my writing site there on LinkedIn. Awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Hi, I am here with Teresa Mercado. Teresa, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, Zach. My name is Teresa Mercado. I am the host and programmer of Scream Screen at the C Film Center, and I also work for Vinegar Syndrome, a film restoration and distribution company. One of the things I love about uh, Vinegar Syndrome is all the cool uh, trauma uh, restorations they're doing. Like they, they have at least 20 now. Can you tell me about some of your favorite trauma restorations that you guys have done? Absolutely. So some of my favorites, before I get to my favorite, um, I love Sugar Cookies with Lynn Lowry, which Lloyd uh, co-wrote and produced. Um, I also love Death by Temptation, which is probably my very favorite, um, directed by a gentleman named James Bond III, who actually lives now in Colorado Springs and is a minister or priest or something in that religious world that I wouldn't understand. Well, and it's crazy, too, because Melbo Moore just uh, got a walk of star on the Walk of Fame like a week ago. Oh, I had no idea. Awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, Death by Temptation is a great movie. If you haven't seen it, not spoiling too much. Um, Kind of a succubus, very sexy tale of a woman who lures in men. Uh, she's irresistible, but she is not quite what she seems. Yeah. And you also uh, do some amazing programming at the Sea Film Center. Can you talk a, a little bit about that, please? Thank you. Uh, just came off a series last weekend with my partner, Keith Garcia, the Weekend of Psychotic Women uh, with Kayla Janice in person. She is the author of House of Psychotic Women. We were celebrating the 10th anniversary reissue redux of that book and so we did four days of programming um, I did a four film secret marathon featuring Let's Scare Jessica to Death Argento's Phenomena Burnt Offerings and Ms. 45 and Scream Screen will actually be back for a uh, double feature on Saturday October 29th at the C and I will be announcing what films those will be very very soon I love your announcements because you have clever theming and you uh, cosplay at all of these and the movies that you pick are not like the normal run of the mill stuff so it's like super deep cut cosplay which I really appreciate and it's so much fun thank you I, I love doing cosplay I, I choose movies that I are always you know things I love but I do try to choose sometimes deeper cuts not always there's classics we all love but I do try to choose things that I think maybe have not got the exposure they deserve and uh, I just love immersing myself in the films and doing cosplay it just adds to making the experience more fun 
and and I want to have you uh, come back on for a proper episode, and we could so we could talk about one of the awesome uh, trauma movies that Vinegar Syndrome's put out, and really do a deep dive because I uh, I love your knowledge of film, and it, it'd just be fun to pick your brain about some of these movies. That would be a pleasure, Zach. Thank you. And thank you for coming on. And real quick, where can people find out more about uh, what Scream Screen is doing? Yep. So uh, Facebook, Scream Screen, Instagram, Scream Screen. Uh, I do have a website, scream-screen.com. You can also always go to the C Film Center website, which is denverfilm.org. Vinegar Syndrome, vinegarsyndrome.com. And we are opening a brick-and-mortar store, the Archive Colorado, where we will sell all of the Vinegar Syndrome syndrome titles along with all of the boutique horror labels we are doing a soft opening for that on september 21st all that info will be on the vinegar syndrome website and then we will have our official opening hopefully within the next month or two awesome Awesome. i can't wait and thank you so much for coming on to talk to me thank you zach oh my goodness ladies and gentlemen we are here at the colorado festival of horror and who am i standing next to Hey everybody, James Balsamo here, CEO of Acid Bath Productions. Let's rock and roll! It's uh, good to have you on the show and see you again. Uh, For all you avid listeners out there, James and uh, Bill were on our Night Beast episode. And uh, this is just a fun little catch-up to see uh, see what, what you've been up to since that recording. You have like 30 new movies that you have made since then, and a few that have premiered at The Chinese Man in Hollywood since we've recorded. Yes! Tell me a little bit more about some of these movies you, uh, you are currently in production on. So since we've done the Beast Podcast of the Year, I've uh, made a few movies like uh, Slice with John Hitt. It's got Robbie Krieger from The Doors in it. We kill him with a door. And also Guar plays the Sheriff's Department. It's got Casey Orr, who's also known as Beefcake the Mighty. Hunter Jackson is also known as Techno Destructo. And of, co- of course, Daniel Stamp. Is Slymanster Hyman. No, I know that's her name. I just didn't know if I was pronouncing you're, her name. You're, you're, you got it right. Okay, cool, because it's got an E, and sometimes last names are French, and I don't want to call her Stampy, like the Simpsons elephant, because she's a wonderful person. I what my elephant. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So there, there's a film you were working on that I want to know a little bit more about. Uh, it it uh, reaches deep inside my monster kid heart, Toxic Tennis. Tell me a little bit more about this film. Sure. Uh, In Toxic Tennis, I play Ricky Love, a tennis player, and I bang a Mafia Don's wife, and I get whacked and thrown into some toxic waste, and I become a radioactive tennis player. Of course, it's homage to my love for trauma, and then I've got a little mutant tennis ball, so it's like the Toxic Avenger meets Mad Balls, and uh, you're going to love it. That's a tennis joke! And uh, you, ha- you have uh, one of your movies coming out on DVD uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, and you have an amazing theme song by Acid Witch. Can you tell me about that movie? Sure. It's called You're Melting. It stars Joe Estevez. Bill Victor Arukin is in it. Uh, myself, I play the slasher known as The Witch Doctor. And uh, G. Larry Butler's in it. He just did a movie with Julia Roberts. He's in the trailer. Very fancy. And uh, Carl Solomon from The Greasy Strangler. Also, Lorene Landon's first nude scene at 60. And that was actually shot here a year ago at the Colorado Festival of Horror. You're damn right it was. I know. (laughs) Yeah, you do. But, well, I think on that, it's nice to catch up with you. Nice to see you again. And uh, tell everybody where they can uh, check out more of your stuff. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for doing this. Uh, Go to Acid Bath Productions. That's my Twitter. Follow me at Acid Bath Product. Or go to Instagram. Follow me, James Balsamo. I want to be your friend. Or don't forget to go to jamesbalsamo.com. I've got action figures, books. I wrote a book. It's called Total Punishment. It did so well, I wrote another book called Puns of Peril. And uh, you're going to love it. Go to jamesbalsamo.com. What are you waiting for? And I think they need to pick up those amazing balsamos. That's right. I made mad balsamos uh, (laughs) made by Waleed Ast. I, he also has an E at the end of his name. They they confuse me, those E's. Uh, one of Tom Devlin's homies. Uh, it's really Tom cool. Devlin, who did special effects in Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead, by the way. 
He did also from Dust Till Bong, my new movie out in Walmart right now, with Papa Shango in Papa Shango makeup, killing vampires. Yes. <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks for coming on again, James, and we'll be hanging out all weekend, so I'm sure I'll see you again. Yeah! Hey, here here I am with some old friends and that I've finally got to catch up with again at Colorado Festival of Horror. I'd like like you guys to introduce yourselves. Hi, my name's Sarah French. I am Joe Netter. And Jed Rowan. So here on the Talk and Troma podcast, I know you guys all have uh, like history with even watching trauma movies or working with people in trauma films in the past. Can you tell me any trauma like favorite films or recollections you may have from the company? Uh, I would say one of my favorite trauma films is Toxic Avenger. It's a classic. It's fun. It's cheesy. It's 80s. I just love it. And I, I, you probably should mention, Frenchie, how you were a Tromet. Oh, yes. 2007 Tromet, I believe. That sounds about right. Yes, yes. It's old school. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, I, I had a great time with it. And listen, Troma, I think we all grew up on Troma. Um, one of my top ten movies of all time is actually Mother's Day, which is their, probably their most old school of all the movies. But Class of Newcomb High, I watched that so many times. I recorded it off TV. And, uh, you know, Troma always had their, their way of making me smile. Like, you could always go to the video stores when they existed um, and pick one up and know you were going to have a good time and have fun. And uh, I guess one of my other wonderful experiences is having sexual intercourse with a Tromat, I believe, of 2007. Uh, I, I can't remember her name. But Scarlet Salem, I think, right? Well, that was that was correct. Who, who's Scarlet Salem? Scarlet Salem was uh, this actress. I, I think she goes by Sarah French now, but really people just call her Frenchie. We want that out there. Everybody call her Frenchie. <laughs> and Jed. I think, you know, I, I love the classics, of course, but uh, I think lately Poultrygeist is my new favorite, primarily because, you know, my buddy John Curious has a very uh, unmistakable opening scene in that. John Curious is awesome. <laughs> yes, and uh, he's kind of uh, famous for that scene, you know. <laughs> well, what are you guys working on these days? Uh, well, uh, we are currently working on a new film called That's a Wrap. That's, uh, we just started a new production company called Neon Noir with Joe Netter, myself, and Marcel Walls. And uh, That's a Wrap is our first film from our new production company. And Joe can talk a little more about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, if we go with That's a Wrap, that's our uh, horror comedy starring Serena Vincent from Cabin Fever, Power Rangers. Um, it's kind of like a scream style movie that takes place in a movie studio. We're super excited about that. It's funny. It's gory. Um, we've got a lot of interest. Um, we actually screened Pretty Boy here, which was our sequel to Blind. Uh, that's our slasher franchise. Pretty Boy is coming out through Lionsgate. We don't have a release date yet, uh, but Jed Rowan played the killer in that. Uh, Sarah plays the, I guess you'd call the final girl. Um, and it's, it's interesting for us because of the Colorado connection. We met Jed in Colorado 13 years ago. And when we moved to LA, Sarah and I, eight years ago, uh, we ran into them three times at various places and we thought this is a thing. We're meant to be together. So we created a franchise as friends. And it's so wonderful because that's where we met you as well. Yeah, it's wild. We all met each other at a small horror or sci-fi convention where they had a, a tiny little room with the with the four of us promoting horror movies. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a bonding moment because the room was at the end of a hallway that not everybody knew about. So we spent a lot of time just hanging out and having fun. And that's what these are about is having a good time. Um, and why I'm so excited we've gotten through this whole COVID mess so we can get together. We can have some fun. We can laugh. We can talk horror. We can talk sci-fi. We did a sci-fi movie as well, a space adventure uh, with Michael Prey playing Sarah's dad. That's kind of like an old school star crash battle beyond the stars cheese thing jed's in that playing the mighty manx as well a space barbarian um we love it well i want to i want to expound on my uh, mighty manx character you know what joe was saying it's real i wish people could see it because i have an eight by ten of it here but it's kind of like the character is kind of like if you combine chewbacca and han solo yeah. and if they like had a kid right yeah which is, that's kind of gross, right? But it would be the Mighty Max. Yes. 
you know, something like that, right? Or, or Ron Jeremy. I guess that would be the human equivalent. I, I don't think the Mighty Minx has been canceled. No, no, no. Uh, the Mighty Minx is, uh, um, you know, a we'll 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 see how the audiences react, but I think it might be a crowd favorite. I think so. I think so. He's definitely one of my favorites. Oh. And Sarah kicks all sorts of ass. She has so many fight scenes in that. We did one day out in the desert of Las Vegas. She she fought for six straight hours in the heat. Holy shit. Yeah, I do all my own stunts in that film. And um, it should be coming out hopefully early next year called Space Wars. So definitely check it out. Awesome. And where can everybody uh, follow up on your guys' work to find out more of what's going on? Uh, you can find me on, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Sarah French. Easy to find. Uh, listen, I hate social media. I, I, it's too much. I get too much trouble. So if you want to find me, find Sarah, and she'll she'll put you into me. Wherever there's a dark alley, you can find Joe Netter. And I'm actor Jed Rowan. That's Rowan with an E, with an E, not an A, with an E. On Instagram, where you could see me just winning in life all the time. I'm just constantly winning. And, and if I could just quickly promote two more things, real quick. My book, I Survivor, I wrote with Adam Green. It's now, now, that that's awesome, by the way, uh, that this happened. I, I totally marked out when Adam Green name-dropped you on the movie Crypt. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's I've known Adam for years. And, I mean, I have a Victor Crowley tattoo. So getting an opportunity to go in and write the book with him, because it's a real book. It's, well, it's a fake autobiography from a character from Hatchet 3, Andrew Young. Um, and it bridges Hatchet 3 with Victor Crowley. And even has some little Easter eggs for the next Hatchet movie when it gets made. Um, for me, it was just wonderful to get a play in that world. Because I mentioned twice in Victor Crowley by name, I now exist in that world in my mind. So I, I totally geek out. And, and uh, Adam's just one of the most hardest working people. Um, and, you know, the, I had an interesting movie crypt episode with him. Because he always likes to make fun of I always get hurt. Like when I was a kid, I got my sack ripped open by a goat. There's so many times in my life I've had medical crazy things. And in the middle of the movie Crypt episode, I got Bell's palsy. Half my face went paralyzed, and I had to immediately leave and go to the hospital once it ended. Um, but Adam's super cool. I'm happy about the book. It's, it's a unique kind of thing to do to have a fake autobiography. And the other thing I should mention is... Uh, I was lucky enough to get brought in to be one of the writers on George Romero's last project, Twilight of the Dead. That was how he was ending his whole zombie saga. Um, he had a great treatment and was writing the script when he passed away. Um, so his wife wanted to continue to make sure it gets done as his legacy. So I was lucky enough to come in and be one of the people to finish writing that, which was amazing because the first day I got to watch like 12 hours of home videos of him in his pool coming up with the concept. and. And then sitting and opening up the final draft page and seeing where he left off and went, oh, shit, I'm, real, I'm really going to have to do this. And I'm so proud of that. It's in early pre-production right now. But, um, I, you know, listen, if I did my job correctly, George is going to get all the credit as he should. And I think, I, I think it's good enough that that's what's going to happen. People go, that's a George Romero movie. Because even though he's not here to direct it, it is very much George. And uh, the way he wanted to end the zombie saga, and it's the bleakest of all of them, which is maybe why I was picked, because I like dark endings. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I had to just pimp that out because my ego was like, we need more Joe. And uh, You just like to get stroked whenever you can. I do like to get stroked. And speaking of getting stroked, uh, Zombie Bukaki, my novel, just got picked up uh, in Japan. And they got a new Japanese deal for Zombie Bukaki dying to get off. So, so uh, yeah, thanks for setting up my last stroke for my, uh, my Joe, cum shot, Joe, I guess. Joe gets a little yeah. jealous when I talk about my Manx yeah. character because it's such a virile character um, yeah. I, it's a, a macho man it's a ma it's a gets, macho thing the the you know kind of the mountain man in him he gets a little jealous yeah. of that yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm to be honest I'm I'm trying to get hard while we're talking to you just so I can pull it out and we can have an old-fashioned Peter meter because I think I got him by half an inch at least and where, where are you starting the measurement from well I, from about three feet behind me that's the way that's the way it works you see if you're gonna measure my dick you got to start in the asshole you got to go straight through and on that thank you guys so much for uh, joining me <laughs> hi i'm david from the vanilla milkshakes also uh i'm gonna use that name for, for my writing 
if I ever get writing partners or whatever, uh, I'll use that moniker, but it's also my writing moniker too, just so, you know, spread the brand out. Heck yeah. <laughs> so David, what I, what I like to always open these up with is what was your first trauma movie that you ever saw? Toxic Avenger. The Toxic Avenger? Tell me about the first time you saw that one. Head exploded. <laughs> yeah, same here. I was seeing like the kid getting ran over with the car. It's like I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's funny because I was I was uh, 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 even as a kid I was like, did they dress the watermelon up to look like a face? <laughs> I had no idea. I hadn't read Lloyd's book yet, so I was like, oh my, g- gruesome. You should see my mother-in-law now. That's gruesome. <laughs> so. Yeah. If you ever see the uh, video for for uh, for for trauma song, uh, they they uh, intersplice that in with the bridge. And tell now, tell me a little bit about that. So you're in a band called the Vanilla Milkshakes. Uh, tell me about your band real quick. Okay. Uh, basically. My caregiver was drumming in a band in 2014, and uh, and uh, I was like, "Would you guys want to play a show with me?" And they're like, "Sure." So I needed a name, I need, so I picked something wimpy like the Vanilla Milkshakes because we're gonna be heavy and punk and stuff. And uh, yeah, and, and this just kind of blew up. But uh, uh, the thing is, we've been kind of hurting for shows and stuff, and until this happens still still but life life goes in different directions i i we play a show there and i walk out going i'm gonna write a movie that's awesome yeah and um it was such a fun time so the you guys opened for hashtag shakes the denver premiere of hashtag shakespeare shitstorm and you got to play your song uh the trauma song and the yeah. toxic avenger is dancing behind you guys as you're i didn't see that but i saw the video it was awesome <laughs> and he's playing like how did that feel like playing that song in front of lloyd it, it, i honestly i kind of spaced out when i perform yeah, I could dig that. <laughs> but, but, but after afterwards, I was, I was, you saw me, I was huffing and puffing. I'm on oxygen and stuff. And L- Lloyd just grabbed me, by, grabbed me, grabbed me, and sat sat me down and was going, "You're so good. You're so good. I love that. I love that. Everything's perfect." You know how he is. You know. Yeah. No. And it was a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys got a got a play because I remember talking to you like way back in uh, when Return to Newcomb High was coming to Colorado, and we were trying to get you guys playing before that but you know it just didn't work out there but here it was it was super awesome and um i do want to know though um what made you want to write the trauma song well uh first off uh there's a misunderstanding i told i told uh lloyd that give me two days in the studio and i can and i can score shitstorm he was like okay so he sent me a script and 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 said, go ahead. And I'm like, uh, where's the money? And he's like, oh, you don't have a studio? And I was like, no. And as he was, he's like, oh, okay. And I was like, but I, I, I can do other things for you. I can make you a theme song. He's like, a theme song, huh? So we recorded it. And uh, the our publisher wanted $3,000 for it. But we told him that, like, if they, but Troma declined. And I t- we told our publisher that if they declined this, opportunity for us then they are hindering our growth and all blah 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 we'll sue them and for a legit reason and they two days later they said you can opt out of our 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 our, uh, licensing but you won't get anything done and so far we've gotten like three placements that's awesome and and the trauma help you guys make a music video for the trauma song it's even on trauma now uh, yeah, for everyone to says, check it's, out. It's funny if you type in T R O M, it comes up. Nice <laughs> first thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and and I and for everybody listening, uh, I want to close the episode out with the trauma song that you said I can graciously said I could uh, play on the show. So oh, thank play you. it all you want. Play it all you want. I mean, you have to. It, it the song kicks ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Well. Where can people follow you on the social medias and find out more about your band? On Twitter, it's Davy Milkshake One, and on 
to just anywhere we're on every streaming platform the vanilla milkshakes awesome and and if you're a promoter or anybody like that please hit up david um they put on such a fun show at the hashtag shakespeare shitstorm screening and you got to be sure to check them out i am here with a very special guest right now uh could you please introduce yourself to everyone Hello, everyone. Damien Leone, writer director of Terrifier One and Two. That's awesome, and and I'm so excited to uh, talk to you. Uh, first of all, so the first time I watched Terrifier, I was wearing my Return to Newcom High uh, T-shirt, and you have uh, Star of Return to Newcom High, also starring in Terrifier, Catherine Cochran. Can you talk about working with Catherine on Terrifier? Oh, for sure. We always say, Dave and I, that Catherine's our MVP because, as you may know, she is in the now infamous hacksaw scene in Terrifier. I mean, people actually get tattoos of her being cut in half by Art the Clown, which, <laughs> which is pretty amazing. But uh, she was incredible and crucial, and we really do mean that she was our MVP because no matter how cool the effects may have come out in that scene it, it really doesn't work without the performance and without the actress and what you see in that scene is what you get there's really no trickery so she's really hanging upside down in a really cold dingy disgusting environment and it was very um tricky to pull that off she couldn't be upside down for too long and these are things we're finding out in the moment uh and blood's running down her body and up her nose and she was just a trooper throughout the entire thing and even before we started shooting when she read the script she said, this is clearly the scene that's going to stand out and everybody's going to talk about it. So when we first had a meeting, after I already gave her the role, she said, look, if we're going to do this, let's go all out and make it the coolest thing we could possibly do it. Because if it does come out right, we, we believe that people will start talking about this. And thankfully, like I said, people are getting tattoos of her now. So we may have done something right. It's incredible because it's one of the more iconic horror shots in like the last couple decades. Like that's that's got to be awesome to to see that. Um, I also want to know um, what was your introduction to trauma movies back in the day? Oh, man. So when I was a kid, my mother would take me to this mom and pop video store called Pick a Flick that I basically lived in from the time I was four till it shut down uh, when Blockbuster like and all those really started taking over. But there was when I was a kid the in the horror section, the VHS box of the Toxic Avenger was there. And that was one of the covers that really spoke to me because when you were a kid, and especially you didn't know what movies were. There wasn't a lot of press for movies and things like you would just rent them based on the cover art if you really loved it if it really spoke to you and seeing Toxie on the box and it was this really sort of it was already old and it was like bleached from the sun being there for so long and it just looked so grimy and so interesting and i was dying to see it and it even had this little warning a sticker on the box saying this is a really graphic movie and whatnot so i was i was in i was all in and my mother thankfully let me rent it and uh, I've been obsessed ever since. It's still to this day one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite horror movies. I, I consider it a horror movie. Yeah, I, I consider it a horror movie too. No, that's awesome. And I could tell, you know, from the sense of humor in Terrifier that there's definitely a little vein of Tromaville running through there. I hope, I hope so. That's a great compliment. Uh, it's in my blood, that movie. But what I loved, especially about Toxic Avenger, there's still, it's of course, it's very over the top. There's a lot of, you know, hokey things to it. But... Some of the stuff is just really ruthless and serious. I mean, that scene with the kid getting run over with yeah. the car is, is horrifying. It's truly disturbing. It's as disturbing as ever. So I did like the balance where there was the comedy and then there was some really serious, grotesque stuff in it. And that's the kind of stuff that I gravitate. It, it has a more uh, lasting impression on me, things like that. That's awesome. And you just um, had your Fright Fest premiere of Terrifier 2. Um, is that coming to the States anytime soon? It is. It's, uh, it's going to be premiering at Fantastic Fest in Austin on the 22nd of this month. And, uh, and then it's going to open uh, in theaters all over the country uh, on October 6th through to the 8th. Uh, uh, AMC's, Regals, it's, it's going to be playing in a lot of theaters. So that's exciting. This is like the biggest theatrical release I've ever been a part of for one of my films. That's incredible. I can't wait to see it. I love the first movie, so I'm super excited. I hear it has a different spin than the first one, so I'm, I, I don't know much about it other than I've been hearing nothing but awesome things from Fright Fest, so I can't wait to see it. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. It does. Um, it goes in a radically different direction in terms of the, the tone and the scope. It's a much bigger film. Um, 
I like mixing genres, and uh, I was a fan of sword and sorcery films as a kid, big time. Red Sonja, Beastmaster, Conan, of course. And uh, so the heroine in this movie is a cosplayer, and she is obsessed with that sort of fantasy. And, and that element is huge, a uh, huge part of the movie. So there's sort of her character is dressed in this sort of angel warrior, Valkyrie type Red Sonja costume. Uh, and to see have that character go up against art is uh, pretty, pretty striking, pretty interesting, and it's, uh, but there's a whole lot more to it. There's a big supernatural and fantasy element in this film, whereas the first one was pretty much a traditional, straightforward stalk and slash type film. So this is definitely gonna be a little uh, more interesting. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see it. And where can people uh, follow you on the social medias or find out where a screening's coming close to them? Yeah, uh, personally, I'm primarily on Instagram, Damien underscore Leone. I have a Facebook page. But uh, Terrifier2Movie.com is where you could sign up to get notified if a movie's playing in your area. I appreciate you coming on, and I hope you have an awesome rest of the weekend. Uh, likewise. My pleasure, man. This was fun. So I am joined with star of Chainsaw Sally, a star of hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm as Caliban, four-time, 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 Tromet of the Month, Monique Dupree! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for uh, coming on my show on a talk in Troma. Um, it's crazy. We've been friends like in the MySpace days, but this is like the first time so long. we've ever had a chance to meet each other in person. How crazy is that? Since the MySpace days, some people don't even know what MySpace is. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> well, I one thing I always like to start off with is I want to know how what was your introduction to trauma? How did you find out about him? Or well, my introduction was really when I did Fangoria Radio and I met Lloyd Kaufman. Uh, I'm a late bloomer to nerd them, all things nerd them. And, you know, I wasn't allowed to watch a lot, a lot of like horror and stuff like that growing up, which is probably one reason why I love it so much. So I had to double back and start watching things that had already been out for a long time. So my introduction, when I did the intro to Pot Zombies, that was my real introduction to, to trauma and what, what was in store for yeah. my future. And then I kind of went back with my husband because, you know, he was well aware of trauma. Yeah. So I only knew of the name, but I didn't know anything else. I knew Toxie. So then I just had to double back and start watching a lot of movies. And then I was hooked for life. And then wanted to be a part of it more. And yeah. here we are today. That's awesome. And I, re I remember um, back... They, they don't do it as much these days, but back on the website, uh, they used to have the Tromet of the Month, and that's where yes. I first uh, found out about you, because yes. you were the infamous Tromet of the Month several times. Yes. Can you tell, tell me more about the experience of being a Tromet? Well, first of all, I believe Lloyd had said you'd be the first black Tromet, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, you know... I, I was actually, I was honored. Yeah. Um, my first shoot was actually with a photographer from Troma, and we went to the building. We were, uh, we were experimental. We went on a rooftop and took some pictures. We went through the Troma building yeah. at the time. I think that was n at the old location. Yeah, in the house uh, before, kitchen. Yeah, yeah, before they moved. And um, it was just a great experience. I was on top of the world. You would, you would think that I was doing like, a Hollywood movie <laughs> or something like that, but it is, it's my, it's my version of yeah. doing Hollywood stuff, you know? So I had such a great time. I was like, I really want to do that again. And they were like, well, sure, if you really want to. And that time Saint did the photo shoot cool. and he did all of the other subsequent photo shoots and we would just submit them to them and they would use the ones that they like. And then I realized that I've been a Tromet four times and I was like, you know, I need to create a belt and do a special edition yes. five time Tromet, and I dare somebody to take my belt. I book somebody needs to book that. I I would watch that. <laughs> There's, book it. Yeah, yes. five times. Five times. Five time Tromet. Come at me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then then you were also a part of the Chainsaw Sally show. I know some of. Troma has uh, the first season. I think you're in the second season, right? I believe right? it's the second so season, So tell yes. me, it's and it's such a fun, uh, kind of gory, bloody, like, sitcom sort yes. of. Yes. Can you tell me more about uh, you in the Chainsaw Sally show? 
Well, first, I was honored that she had even asked me. And, you know, we had seen each other at conventions all the time, her and her husband. And, you know, my husband and, you and Jimmy, oh, they, they all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, look, they, uh, yeah, right. Um, they just like clicked and she was just like, we would love to have you, you know, on the show. And I was like, well, that would be really, really awesome. So, I, of course, I ended up being like chained up in a basement. Um, I think that was one of the first times I really played a victim. Oh, cool. I forgot all about that because I always say I never played a victim. That is a lie. I was a victim in the Chainsaw Sally show, <laughs> but it was a, it was an awesome experience. And then I got to you know become friends with them from that whole thing. And Saint was actually in that same that same oh, episode cool. as well. I think he died uh, quickly, um, <laughs> <laughs> as you do in the Chainsaw Sally. <laughs> The universe. I, I, it took me the almost the entire episode, I think, to die. But uh, he died right away. Well, and that's, <laughs> and, that, and that's kind of uh, cool. Like, I've just met so many different people who've worked on Chainsaw Sally, and it all seems like just like a close knit of like Baltimore art, art yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. We didn't even know that they they lived not too far from us, yeah. you know, uh, at least at the time. But that was such a great experience. One that I hope that I could revisit at some point in time because I haven't seen them in forever. Yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah, now post-COVID they start shooting some more. Exactly. I know they were working on stuff, but... Right. COVID took everything out. It, yeah. It took all my wrestling stuff out and, you know, everything that we were doing. But, you know, it's slowly coming back. Yeah. So. the It's every little bit. <laughs> every little bit. Yes. Well, and I, I do want to talk uh, about... Hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. Mm -hmm. How I want to know about your audition process, or how did you even find out uh, that they were casting for? Shitstorm? Well, they actually reached out to me to tell me that they were casting, but they weren't sure about where they wanted uh, everything to go. Or like, it's not like they said, "Hey, we want you to be Caliban." So um, they asked me to audition, and they gave me some sides. Yeah, and. Um, then they asked me to audition again and I was like, is this good or bad? I don't know. And then they asked me to audition again. <laughs> and, um, finally someone came to me and said, well, we would like to offer you the role of Caliban. And, you know, it's, it's more involved because I think they were thinking something smaller for me yeah. at first because my schedule is always kind of busy or at least then. Um, and when they offered me that role, they were saying, you're going to have to go through a rehearsal process and it's going to be like a month of filming for your character and, you know, this, that, or the other. So I had to really think about it, uh, which took five seconds before <laughs> I just, you know, typed back, hell yeah, I yeah. would love to, to take the part. <laughs> and the rest was history there. But that was my first big role with trauma because I've always done like a lot of little things, yeah. but that was my first big one. And I really hope that I get to do something else with them because uh, Shakespeare Shitstorm was amazing. Oh, and you're fantastic in the movie. Thank like, you. like you kick ass and you have like a really cool fight scene. Yeah. Um, can you talk about how different doing a movie fight scene is as opposed to wrestling? Uh, definitely <laughs> very, very different. Um, you know, it's the way that you have to cheat things when, when you're fighting to make it look good on camera, but it feels awkward. It almost feels dumb, some of the moves you have to make, yeah. but then you look at it, you know, on camera and it's it's perfect. Uh, I had to get used to that and it was I was a little clumsy at first because, you know, I know, I know how to fight. I know wrestling. I've taken some capoeira, but... That whole fight scene thing had really stumped me for a bit. So it, <laughs> it it took me a while, but I eventually got it. And then I liked it. And I was like, I like this. This is pretty cool. I imagine the muscle memory like was yeah. hard to turn that yes, off. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's something that a lot of people don't understand. I'm, Cause, I'm glad. Because they're like, like, oh, yeah, no wrestling. You, you know, you practice the moves, but it's like, but you're not actually giving anybody chops or anything like that. So. <laughs> yeah. But I want to know, how is it working with... Lloyd, um, did he get super like tired or stressed and cranky at you guys at all on the set of Shitstorm? I worked on Poultry Guys, <laughs> Night of the Chicken Dead, and uh, he definitely uh, said, well, there will be asshole uh, time times when I'm screaming at everybody. I was not given that memo, <laughs> but now I have the memo because I have lived through it. <laughs> no, there was times I love his wife because she... 
knows how to reel him. Patty Pie is the sweetest and, oh person. Oh my God, she is. And I would notice that sometimes it would just be like long hours and he went from the smiley him to just, you know, cranky. And I was like, yep, I am staying away from him. I do not want to antagonize the Lloyd. So I would keep my distance unless he came over to talk to me. And then he, it would always be like, he didn't come over to me and like yell at me or none of that stuff. But I saw him cranky from a distance and I chose to stay away from it. <laughs> that, was, <So. laughs> that was smart. I, I was in the, the targets a few times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you guys. Yep. So. I refused to be in the target. I did not want any of that smoke yeah not, not the look especially it. he's dressed as a woman yeah he's dressed he's as like cranky Snow White. as hell and then i don't want him yelling at me like you know as a woman i think i would have cried <laughs> on um, on cried. poultry guys he's wearing a giant chicken costume like and <laughs> he got so pissed but it had googly eyes so he's jumping up and down <laughs> screaming at us and we're all trying not to just die Di laughing. yeah oh and my because, god and he saw us all cracking smiles and that just made him matter <laughs> right exactly and see this is why i needed to stay away because <laughs> i you know i saw him fussing you know dressed with the full wig lipstick and everything and i'm like I can't watch this. And it's like he's standing there with the dress and then I see the bulge and then I see, I'm just like, this is too much for my little heart. I'm going to go <laughs> sit over there in the corner and wait until I'm I'm spoken to. Well, what were some of the more difficult things that you had to shoot on the movie? Well, it was just learning. It, my character had, you know, pieces of heavy dialogue. Yeah. So that was the hardest for me, especially since it's like Shakespearean and I had to make, the transition from that to like being ghetto or you know yeah um that was the hardest for me so having to, to learn the lines because people like to hire me for you know all of these little bit parts now i have done films where it's like dialogue heavy but never anything shakespearean yeah. so that was the hardest part for me um i would say and, and how did you feel about um about your character, you mentioned that they had you to transition to playing ghetto mm -hmm. and um, your, your mother in the film is a crack addict. Did yes. you feel like it was exploitive at all? Or no, I sure didn't. Awesome. Not one second. I mean, I didn't even think about anything like that until, you know, people started asking things in the Q&A. And I was like, I was perfectly fine, you yeah. know, especially when seeing the rest of the movie. I mean, it's silly. You know, there's whale shit. There's all of this stuff. But there's actually messages, you know, in that film. That's and something... I like the fact that Lloyd is not afraid to touch on things. That's yeah. why I'm not afraid to go there with him. Well, and, and that's something I feel like uh, people miss, like, if if they're just looking at the movie from afar, yeah. they will miss those messages. They in absolutely there. They'll do. see the whale poop and they'll see the naughty language and they'll be yeah. like, oh, they're just being gross for gross sake. Right. But there's there's a real message in that because story. Because Lloyd is a deep, deep man. He really, truly is. And he's learned so much. And he just kind of found a way, I feel like, to sneak in knowledge to, to people like us who like watching these movies that you just kind of sneak a little bit of it in. It's what I do with my kids who have ADHD. I, I have to, you know teach them 15 minutes at a time or whatever, yeah. but I have to like sneak in little things with fun learning, but make it so that they can retain it. That's what Lloyd does for us. We're his children. Yeah. <laughs> He's exactly. teaching us. We're all children at Tromaville. Absolutely. <laughs> we all went to Tromaville High and got our GEDs. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, what were, what was like one of your favorite parts of making that movie? It was the fight scene. Yes. I mean, you know, it for all of its awkwardness and stuff, I loved being the badass Yeah. I, because I just, well, I love being the badass. So that was really, really fun for me that I, I wasn't the vulnerable one, that I was like the strong one. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun for me, especially, you know, pretending to punch, um, I, I forget his name, but I love him so much. Um, yeah. Oh. Mike, I can't remember his yeah. name. You can't either. Yeah, yeah. But I, I know. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah. I, I loved, I loved pretending to beat the crap out of him. Yeah, that was awesome. That's so cool. Well, and and also on top of all the trauma stuff, you're also a wrestler. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk a little bit about your wrestling because it's it's awesome. Well, I do a lot. Well, I used to anyway. Um, do a lot of valeting. Um, when I started working in wrestling with House of Hardcore and Tommy Dreamer, 
I started uh, helping with production of the shows, um, working with the talent directly, like, you know, they would do the meet and greets, stuff like that. And then I would have to go out and I would have to be somebody's valet. I wouldn't even know who I'm going to be with until like, 10 minutes after I got dressed and it's yeah. like, okay, this is your spot. These are, this is what you're doing. And so it's a different form of um, entertainment and it is very, very physical. It doesn't matter what you're doing in the business. When you, when you're going to that ring, it's very physical and I've been bumped and uh, dreamer has tried like really weird things like a guy on a, a motor scooter who like <laughs> swung me around while I had to like, I'm in midair. Like yeah. I have to hold my core to hold my body up. He's swinging me around and then he just tosses me. Those are things that weren't done before. So I didn't know how I was going to land, if it was going to hurt, which it did, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> there's there, there a lot, you know? What would you say the most painful bump you've taken in the ring was? Um, it would probably be one of those bumps because we did that spot a couple of times. And the one time... I was so dizzy because he was spinning me around. So I didn't let go. I had my legs clamped and yeah. I didn't let go. So he had to like undo my legs and just went, boom. you can see it on the video. He just did this and you see him do that. And I just went boing, boing and like hit my head on the, the side of the post. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to feel that tomorrow. <laughs> so I think I may have gotten a slight concussion, um, but you know, concussions, it's kind it's of kind of happened in territory, wrestling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was uh, and definitely something that I didn't expect to like bounce, but I didn't know I couldn't re remember my spot to just let my legs go because I got so dizzy. But it's something that we hadn't really tried before. Yeah. I was the experiment, and I was willing to make myself the experiment. So it was fun though. Well, and I know there there's a trauma. Uh, it's called the Toxic Crusaders Tag Team Titles, mm -hmm. and. First of all, you need to you need to go for that. But who would yes. be your dream tag team partner? Like anybody? Anybody, live or dead? Oh my god, alive or dead? Alive or oh, alive it's gonna be fucking Andre the Giant. That is my <laughs> tag team partner. We gonna win this. Yes, <laughs> that's one of my favorite wrestlers ever. Um, you know, I just I've always I grew up loving Andre the Giant, and then as I learned his story more and more. You know, I, I kind of just fell in love with the, his whole story. That documentary and about him is yeah, powerful. Yeah, I know, I know. And it just made me love and adore him even more. But he had already always been, like, my favorite consistent. Because, you know, they, they change. Yeah. You know? But he was my consistent favorite. So he would be my tag team partner. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I think on that we should uh, start wrapping up. Where can mm -hmm. people... Uh, follow you on the social medias to find out more of what you're up to because you're up to a ton of stuff I all know. of the time. I'm doing everything. Well, my uh, Instagram was hacked, so my verified Instagram is still sitting there, but I don't use it anymore. Somebody else is using it, unfortunately. So uh, you can go to Monique Gata Dupree for my Instagram, and all my other socials is just the original Gata, and they're verified, so they would know that it's me. Awesome. And uh, and everybody out there, you can follow me on the socials at Lego Larry on Twitter and uh, Instagram. You can follow the show at Talkin' Troma on Twitter. And as always, everybody, stay traumatized.
one, safety to humans, two, safety to people's property, and three, make a good movie. Too bad he can't seem to get rule three right. Did you see the redneck zombies? That was gruesome. You want gruesome? You should see my mother-in-law. That's gruesome. When we go, you know we'll just go all the way. Despite what people say, when we go, you know we'll